Hi, my name is Susan Clough and this is my Pecha Kucha. This week we will be beginning our unit on the Progressive Era and the class will be completing a project based on the themes and concepts from that time period. The Progressive Era begins in the year 1890 and ends at 1920. The Progressive Era incorporates a period of national activism as the progressives, as they called themselves, worked to make American cities a better and safer place to live. Progressives work to combat crime, corruption, disease, poverty, food sanitation, and working conditions, among other things. However, before we begin looking at the Progressive Era, we need to take a step back and think about what rapidly growing American cities looked like in the year 1890. Following the Civil War in the 1860s, American cities expanded. For example, Chicago's population grew from 109,000 in 1860 to 1.1 million by 1890. Industrialization increased the demand for workers in the cities and the urban areas from Miami to San Francisco grew as immigrants increased the overall population and rural populations fled farms for opportunities in factories. Cities in 1890 looked very different from cities today. Fires were devastating due to a lack of fire departments and access to water. City governments were corrupt and streets were polluted by horse manure, food scraps, and human waste. Factory workers and immigrants often lived in squalid conditions and families of eight or more could be found housed in a single room tenement. Disease epidemics in the city were deadly due to poor sanitation. In addition, workers, including children as young as eight years old, worked 12 to 14 hour days in dangerous conditions for very little pay. Women and children were especially vulnerable and women lack the fundamental right to vote to change their circumstances. As dire as this vision of a city looked, a few people emerged as passionate activists to change the health and well-being of millions. The most commonly known activist from this area was a photographer named Jacob Rees, who literally brought light to the horrific living conditions of inner cities by becoming the first American photographer to use flash photography. Rees began his career as a police reporter who wrote about the quality of life in the slums. Working nights in the city infused a passion in him to help immigrants in the city streets and tenements. At first, Reeves attempted to sketch the conditions of the poor, but he was not a competent artist. Eventually, he heard about a new method of photography from Germany that incorporated light from a pistol-type invention that fired cartridges filled with antimony sulfide, potassium chlorate, and magnesium to create a small gun-like explosion of light, called a pistol flash. Using this form of flash photography, Rees was able to photograph the horrific overcrowding and unhealthy conditions of city's immigrants. Rees faced challenges with publishing his photographs, and he took his images directly to the city influencers by holding lectures where images were shown using lantern slides. New York's socialites began flocking to see the images and hear Rees's lectures. People were shocked by the living conditions depicted in the images and eventually Scribner asked Rees to submit an article to their magazine. Rees published an article titled, How the Other Half Lives, Showing the Life of Poor Residents in New York City. This article became a popular book and it drew widespread attention to the issues of overcrowding, disease, homelessness, child abuse, neglect, and living conditions. Churches, politicians, and wealthy individuals began investing in solutions to help improve the lives of immigrants in the city. Through Reese's perseverance, experiences, willingness to invent, his communication skills, and his passion for social reform, he was able to bring light to serious issues of, of his time. His images led to widespread social reform in the form of housing laws and aid for immigrants. Reese understood the power of imagery in communicating a social problem and impacting change. Although Reese died in 1914, his book, How the Other Half Lives, continues to be a staple of education in history and social sciences today. There are many other progressives who overcame obstacles, invented new methods of accomplishing tasks, and persevered to create positive social reform during the progressive era. We will learn about these reformers as we move into the next unit. However, as we think about Reese's use of imagery to communicate social reform, I want all of you to think about how you might use imagery to communicate social impact 
issues that impact American life today. During the next unit, you will be using either stock photographs, original photographs, or original artwork to put together a Reese-like presentation to teach the class about a social issue you are interested in. Your presentation must include at least 10 images related to a single social issue in America today. You may select national topics such as education reform, immigration, the political divide, college debt, or gun control. Alternately, you may select a topic specific to the neighborhood where you live or to the school. We will discuss the project in more detail as we delve into the next unit. So as we begin this unit, pay attention to how small inventions, tragedies, and seemingly average people came to lead movements that changed the way Americans lived in profound and meaningful ways. A few dedicated individuals can create monumental change when given the opportunity.